Hey YouTube, Kira Twig here, bringing you all an update to my DDD Yu-Gi-Oh deck profile for posts, dual overload. Big thanks to my friend Nick for letting me borrow his DDD deck. It's a really awesome deck. The main focus of the DDD deck is to use pendulum monsters and a bunch of different effect monsters in the main deck to summon out all the different summoning methods we have available to us. And this deck is definitely going to get a boost of power with uh, Master Rule 5, being able to summon all of the DDD uh, D fusion, synchro, and exceed monsters in the main monster zone and not have to focus on the uh, extra monster zone for any of your main go-to plays aside from the link monsters and also the pendulum summons you do from the extra deck. Really do like the added power the new link monsters from dual overload also bring to the deck so let's go ahead and get started with the deck profile. So to start off for the uh, fusion monsters I'm running three DD swirl slime with this one. If this card is in your hand you can Fusion summon one DDD fusion monster from your extra deck using monsters from your hand as fusion material, including this card. You can banish this card from your graveyard to special summon one DD monster from your hand, and you can only use each effect of DD Swirl Slime once per turn. But this card, with its fusion power, just gives you so many more plays now that we're able to use fusion summoning again in the main monster zone and not have to focus it on the extra monster zone. Meaning we can also use DDD Genghis for more additional special summons to give us more plays for synchro summons, Xyz, you name it. It definitely does help for all the plays we can do in the deck. I almost considered running three uh, DD Necro Slime, but decided to stick to two still for the fact that Swirl Slime is still your main go-to card for the focus, and Necro Slime just helps with the overall graveyard play for your fusions. If this card is in your graveyard, you can fusion summon one DDD fusion monster from your extra deck by banishing fusion materials listed on it from your graveyard, including this card. You can only use this effect of DD Necro Slime once per turn. But the fact, once again, you can use Swirl Slime now, once again, and Necro Slime, discard them to the graveyard to fusion summon out a monster from your extra deck decks you can go for Genghis and then you can banish these two to go for an additional fusion monster from your uh, extra deck and then have them both be in the main monster zone and not have to waste any of your zones in the extra monster zone for your plays and still only use two monsters definitely a big investment for the deck and I can't wait until you know it's official with master rule to be able to do this play again for some of the additional search cards, probably one of the best ones we have in the deck is DD Savant Kepler. With this one, you don't really use it much for the pendulum scale. The scale does help with our new link monster, DDD Abyss King Gilgamesh. But the main focus with your DD Savant Kepler is its search effect. When this card is normal or special summon, you can activate one of these effects. You can only use this effect of DD Savant Kepler once per turn. You target one other DD card you control, return it to the hand, or you can add one dark contract card from your deck to your hand. With the main search for or the dark contract being dark contract with the gate your searcher for some of your other dd monsters from your deck to your hand and also just if you need the fusion uh, target you can go for a dark contract with the swamp king as well and also the fact that it is a level one monster means you can use one for one or you know just easily summon that with a normal summon to get your searches and then go and link summon it away for one of your other uh link monsters the big one like i said being ddd abyss king gilgamesh just needing two dd monsters to make it for some of the other assistance for our synchro plays, I'm running three DD Lamia. If this card is in your hand or graveyard, you can send one DD or dark contract card from your hand or face up on your field to the graveyard, except DD Lamia to special summon this card, but banish it when it leaves the field. You can only use this effect of DD Lamia once per turn. Being your turn leader to go for, you can summon out your DD Genghis with the method I said before, and then summon out your Lamia, and then go for your synchro play into your Alexander, and then also be able to summon back the Lamia if you have the cards to send it off to go for some of your bigger plays but I'll go over this play later on when we get to the end of the video for the combo pieces but Lamia helps with so many of our different summons you definitely want to run three since it does banish it you'll lose more resources that you could use later on in the game and for some of the higher level pendulum monsters I am running three DDD Oblivion King Abyss Ragnarok. Being a scale 5, you can set it up with Kepler to pendulum summon out some of your bigger level uh, DD monsters in the deck. Just so you could overlay them for some of your other ones, including DDD Duo Dawn King Kaliuga. But with this one, if this card is normal or special summon, you can target one DDD monster in your graveyard, special summon it. You can only use this effect of DDD Oblivion King Abyss Ragnarok once per turn, and once per turn you can tribute one other DD monster to then target one card your opponent controls, banish it. Since you banish it, it can help to, you know, miss a lot 
on the uh, graveyard plays your opponent might have been able to do with that card. So having that option available to you with Oblivion King Abyss Ragnarok definitely does come in handy. Being more of a defensive powerhouse, but being able to overlay it for your rank 8 plays definitely helps also with the combos you can do in the deck. And I also run three DD Savant Thomas. With this one, you can target one DD card in your Pendulum Zone, destroy that card. If you do Special Summon 1 level 8, DDD Monster from your deck in defensive position, but for the rest of this turn, all the effects it uses are negated, and any battle damage your opponent takes becomes halved. But the main play is obviously to go for your Abyss King Ragnarok, and then overlay the two of the cards into your King Kali Yuga, and then use its effect to destroy all the cards your opponent controls. And also, with the fact that it is a scale 6, and and King Ragnarok is a scale 5, and Kepler is a scale 10, you can use it with the Abyss King Galgamesh Pendulum Scales to have a sort of good Pendulum Scale setup just for your bigger Pendulum Summons into these monsters with the higher levels. And for some of the other Pendulum Monsters, I am running one DD Orthros with this one once per turn. You can target one Spell or Trap card on the field and one other DD or Dark Contract you control, destroy them. A good way to pop your opponent's cards, but when you take Bow Damage or uh, Effect Damage, you can Special Summon this card from your hand. If it's Special summoned to your field, you cannot Special Summon Monsters for the rest of the turn except Fiend Monsters, which will take the damage when you have your Dark Contracts on the field, so then it's just another easy Special Summon for a monster on the field, which then you can use for either your Fusion Play, Synchro plays, uh, Link plays, you name it. One of the more important Pendulum Monsters, along with Kepler, is DD Savant Copernicus. I have only two Copernicus, so I'm running one DD Savant Newton for now, but you definitely do want to run three, but running a Newton helps if you need another higher scale to set with Gilgamesh. Uh, with this one, if this card is normal or special summon, you can send one DD or Dark Contract card from your deck to the graveyard, except DD Savant Copernicus. You can only use this effect of DD Savant Copernicus once per turn. But the send effect, you can set up any of your other DD cards. The biggest one, obviously, being Lamia for the special summon you can do back onto the field. You can set up DD Necro Slime for fusion plays. You have plenty of options with DD Savant Copernicus, just having plenty of graveyard options to go with with this card special summoning. And then Copernicus just helps for the additional fact that it just is a high scale, but discarding this card and targeting a DD or Dark Contract card in your graveyard, except for Savant Newton to add to your hand for recycle plays. And also, to finish off the monsters, I run the one DD Ghost. If this card is sent to the graveyard, you can target one DD Monster or Dark Contract card in your graveyard, except DD Ghost, send one card from your deck to the graveyard with that card name. And if this card is banished, you can target one of your banished DD Monsters or Dark Contracts, except DD Ghost, return it to the graveyard. So more recycle power with DD Ghost. It helps for that option just when you need it available if you've banished a lot of your resources for this card to give you more plays to work with and set up other cards with its send effect. And that is it for the monsters. We'll now move on to the spells. I run three, probably the best spell in the deck, Dark Contract with the Gate. During your main phase, you can add one DD monster from your deck to your hand. You can only use this effect of Dark Contract with the Gate once per turn. And once per turn during your standby phase, take 1,000 damage. So the damage burn is probably the biggest negative of all the Dark Contract cards. But you can easily, you know, send this card with your DD Lamia or just some of your other cards for the destruction, including your go-to card with your uh, Savant Thomas, and then avoid that damage. Just the search for your DDD cards also helps in being able to destroy it with Kali Yuga. You have options to avoid the burn damage, but the search is definitely needed, and the fact that it's searchable off of Kepler is just another added bonus. I also run two D, uh, I said it's Dark Contract with the Swamp King. With this one, uh, during your main phase, you can fusion summon one fiend type fusion monster from your extra deck using monsters from your hand or your side of the field. It's fusion material. I may drop this down to one. It is searchable along with, you know, the other Dark Contracts using Kepler. I just like having that fusion option available to you and then going for the bigger play. Plus the running the two is just a better chance to open it up as well so you can save your search for your Dark Contract with the gate. And also having the banish effect is just more and more plays to go with from your graveyard also. And I uh, also run for the draw power with the DDD monsters all being dark. Three Allure of Darkness. Now, I know there might be a chance that with the ban list coming up, there might be a hit for this card. If this card were to be hit in any way, you can try subbing it out with an Upstart Goblin, or you can even try uh, some more destruction cards like Twin Twister against your opponent for this card to uh, avoid your opponent using any counter traps against you in your Pendulum plays or any of your extra deck plays. It all comes down to if this card does get hit or not, but the draw power is definitely needed for the deck also. So... 
And along with some other search, I'm running two Where Art Thou. Uh, the burn damage, like I said, isn't that big of a problem. With this deck, when you can rely on this card inflicting damage, you have some other options to avoid that damage in the deck. So just having a search with Where Art Thou for Kepler or Lamia helps when you need that specific card. And you can easily control level one monster on the field also if you normal summon one of those two cards to search out the latter also. And I also run for some of the one ofs one, one for one. This is just an easy special summon of your Kepler or Lamia once again, and setting up maybe some other cards in the graveyard to use. One Monster Reborn, easy special summon for your resources. One Foolish Burial, sending for more cards, uh, Necro Slime especially. And one Pot of Acquisitiveness, just for recycling. I know that your uh, DD Ghost can help uh, with the adding back to the graveyard, but DD uh, Ghost also sends it to the graveyard. If you want more cards added back into the deck for search, uh, Pot of Acquisitiveness helps in that sense. And I also run the three Call by the Grave just for stopping your opponent's hand traps against you. It definitely will come up, especially I know with this deck big is Ghost Ogre and Effect Veiler for your opponent being able to destroy your big boss monsters you may potentially go into. And for the traps, the only trap I'm running is one Dark Contract with the Witch. You can send one DD or Dark Contract card from your hand to the graveyard, then target one card on the field, destroy it. You can only use this effect of Dark Contract with the Witch once per turn. All Fiend-type monsters you control gain 1,000 attack during your opponent's turn, and once per turn during your standby, take 1,000 damage. So just being able to cycle through your Dark Contract so you don't take any more burn damage with this is the one reason I really do like this card in the deck and like to rely on it. Being another Dark Contract, you can also search out. And that is it for the main deck. When I move on to the extract, I'm going to run one DDD of this King Gilgamesh. Even if I got more of this card, I don't think I'd run more than one. You just need two DD monsters. If this card is special summoned, you can activate this effect. You cannot special summon monsters for the rest of the turn except DD monsters. And you also place two DD pendulum monsters with different names from your deck into your pendulum zones. And if you do, take down 1,000 damage. If this link summon card is destroyed by battle with an opponent's attacking monster or by your opponent's car effect while it's in the owner's monster zone, you can special summon one. DD monster from your extra deck in your graveyard uh, in defense position. You can only use HFAC of DDD, Abyss King, Gilgamesh once per turn. It's set up. That's really why I like it the most. Whether you need it for your extra deck monster, your graveyard monster, or even just for your pendulum scales, it's a big plus for the deck and very easy to summon out also. Being able to use some of your other cards if you don't have the fusion plays to go for. Instead going for a link play, setting them up in the graveyard and then going for the uh, fusion play from there. And I also run the one Crystron Halka Fibrax, or otherwise known as Needle Fiber. Uh, with all the tuners we have in this deck, just the easy special summon for more resources. It pops up as a better link arrow option, and just for more of your plays to go for. And then also we do run the Formula Synchron, so having that option for the draw power is another plus for sure. And then for some of the other Link Monsters, I run one Cross Sheep and one Master King Archfiend. Cross Sheep, especially in this deck, since you do all the different types of summonings, you can have all the different benefits from your Cross Sheep in the deck also. For the Fusion Monsters, I run two DDD Flame King Genghis. With this one, if another DD monster is special summoned to your field while you control this face-up card, except during the damage step, you can target one DD monster in your graveyard and special summon it. You can only use this effect of DDD Flame King Genghis once per turn. If this card is destroyed by battle or is sent to the graveyard in possession even by a card effect, you can target one Dark Contract in your graveyard and add it to your hand. So recycle power, easy special summoning. It also sits up for your Alexander, which will in turn set up for your Crystal Wing or your DDD Curse. King Siegfried or your Borlode Savage Dragon, you name it. It's an opening play, easily accomplished with all the fusion summoning, the easy fusion summoning you can do in the deck also. And I also run one DDD Oracle King Dar Diark. With this one, you gain life and when any effect damage will be inflicted to you. And one DDD Flame High King Genghis. With this one, if another DDD is normal or special summon, it gives you more special summon options being an evolved form of Flame King Genghis. And also just being able to, once per turn, when a spell or trap or effect is activated, you can negate the activation. And like I said, being more of a boss monster and a level 8 gives you more options for summoning out Kali Yuga as well. For the Synchro Monsters, to work off of the uh, Hack with Fibrix, I run the one Formula Synchron for the draw power, and you can easily make it with some of your other tuner and level one monsters in the deck if you don't use your Crystron. Also one DDD Cursed King Siegfried for the bigger plays with your DDD monsters, along with DDD Gus King Alexander. For some of the boss Synchro Monsters, the one Clear Wing uh, Synchro Dragon and the one Borolode Savage Dragon, these two definitely help with all your different extra deck summonings. And for the Exceed, I run the one DDD Duo King 
uh, Kali Yuga. We've talked about this card enough with its power plays and being able to uh, send all the other cards on the field to the graveyard. And the one DD Wave High King Caesar. You need two level six monsters to make it, but Genghis, uh, you know, when you make the two Genghis, it can be that play to go for with the two overlays. So one of the easiest options, I'd say, to make this card also in the deck. And the one play I want to talk about being the easy go-to fusion play is when you set up with your DD Swirl Slime, uh, your Necro Slime, and also relying on the DD Lamia. With this one, you'll send the Necro Slime and the DD uh, Swirl Slime from your hand using Swirl Slime's effect to the graveyard to fusion summon out your go-to card, which is your DD uh, Flame King Genghis, which you can now summon in the Monster Zone, so remember that as well. And with its effect, if another DD Monster is Special Summon to your field, so then you'll also be able to go for your play from there, being able to target a DD Monster in your graveyard and Special Summon it. So you'll just need more of that setup, not being able to have taken up your Normal Summon, as well as the added plus. So if you Normal Summon your Copernicus, you'll be able to send your DD Lamia to the graveyard for that setup, and then you can banish the two using your or DD Necro Slime from the graveyard to summon out another fusion from the extra deck, whether it be your Oracle King Dark or another Flame King Genghis. You will then activate the other Flame King Genghis on the field, being able to special summon a DD monster from your graveyard to the field, which can be DD Lamia. Having your two monsters on the field, you can then go for the link play into your DD. Uh, Abyss King Gilgamesh for the arrows, but mostly for the pendulum setup, which you haven't summoned any other cards aside from DDD, so you can even then set up your pendulum play to go for grabbing one of the scales you would prefer, whether it be the Salvan Thomas, and then maybe one of the higher scale Kepler. Having the bigger boss monsters on the field after being this set up, you can then go for your DDD King Alexander for that additional play into your Gus King. And then I haven't even used the Lamia from the graveyard yet, being able to send one of the other cards that are on the field, even if you opened up uh, one of these or have the Dark Contract waiting in your hand, you'll be able to send it to Special Summon Lamia and then go for your play into your uh, Crystal Wing, and then if it's late game, your Borrowed Savage Dragon. But that is it for the deck profile. I hope you all enjoy the video. I definitely do have high hopes for DDDs being a pretty scary deck with Master Rule. Five, so definitely look out for them. But until next time, please don't forget to leave a like and subscribe. And Kira Twig out.